This is a tremendously convicting psalm. You, you, you stand back from the psalm and says, if this is what it takes to be in God's presence, I'm cooked. As I have been studying my way through the Psalms, I've felt uh, personally very blessed that I've been chosen uh, by God to do this. Um, I, I've just been so uh, amazed by how practical these Psalms are, how they really do speak into our experience and life in this fallen world. They require us to ask questions that maybe we wouldn't really normally ask of ourselves. And so uh, we want to jump in uh, today to Psalm 15. I would entitle this Psalm, Who is Worthy? Let me read. O Lord, who shall sojourn in your tent? Who shall dwell on your holy hill? He who walks blamelessly and does what is right and seeks truth in his heart, who does not slander with his tongue and does no evil to his neighbors, nor takes up reproach against his friend, in whose eyes a vile person is despised, and who, but who honors those who fear the Lord, who swears to his own hurt and does not change, who does not put out his money at interest and does not take a bribe against the innocent. He who does these things shall never be moved. This is really the, the uh, question of questions. You couldn't ask a better question than the one that is being asked by this psalm, it is this, who is righteous enough to dwell in God's presence? Who has the right, by the way that he lives, to be accepted with God? Well, I could say right away, if you're, if you're asking this question, you've already been visited by God's grace. <laughs> the average person on the street doesn't care about being accepted into the presence of God. That average person isn't haunted by their a relationship with God. In fact, most people don't think about this at all. So if you're asking this question, God has already met you and produced that desire in your heart. The, the, the question is this, who walks blamelessly? Who always has truth in his heart? Who never speaks evil with his tongue? Who never wrongs his neighbor? Who always honors those who fear the Lord? Who makes promises to his own hurt and does not back away from them? I mean, if you could say, oh yeah, I'm that person. I'm, I'm always holy. Well, you're probably shockingly self-righteous or delusional. This is a tremendously convicting psalm. You, you, you stand back from the psalm and says, if this is what it takes to be in God's presence, I'm cooked because I don't live up to this standard, not just every day, but probably hourly or moment by moment. Now, Psalms like this are designed to be aspirational, designed to produce this response in our heart. I long to be this kind of person. I want to live this kind of life and and to cause us to pray for God's empowering grace because we fall so short of the standard that's here in this psalm. But that's not just where this psalm goes, and it's definitely not where this psalm ends. This psalm is an Old Testament finger pointing you to Jesus because the ultimate answer to the question is Jesus. Jesus lived a perfectly righteous life all of the time and in every way. And this is what's important. He did that as our substitute because God knew we would never live that way. And so Jesus, in his righteous life and acceptable death, uh, purchased for us our acceptance with God. So because we are now righteous in Christ, we can live in the presence of God. If you can look at this list and say, I just don't live this way, then you should be thankful for the grace 
of God that is found in Jesus, that God provided a substitute who lived a perfectly righteous life so we would have the eternal blessing of living in the presence of God.